So here's the thing. You're thinking about moving to Boston, Massachusetts, and you're looking for the pros and cons of what it's like to live here. Now, I'm going to be honest. I've been here for about 10 years, and I moved here from living overseas. So I have a very different perspective than someone that has potentially lived here their entire lives. So if you're looking for a video that is all about the pros and the cons and what it's really like to live here in Boston, Massachusetts, here we go. So if you're relocating to Boston, What's up, everybody? This is Joe from the Turco Group right here in Boston, Massachusetts. If this is your first time on this channel and you want to know everything about working, eating, sleeping, living, playing, and what it's like to be a green teamer, make sure you tap that subscribe button, click that little bell so that you're notified every time we do a new video. Honestly, we get so many phone calls, texts, emails every day from people who are relocating here, and we absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about moving anywhere in the area, relocating or coming here to stay, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email or even send Paul Revere. Days, nights, weekends, however you wanna get a hold of us, we've got your back when moving to Boston. All right, so let's get into the meat of it. Pro number one. And honestly, if you're not a sports fan, this is the wrong city for you. It's just the fact that this is probably one of the biggest sports cities in the United States. Boston is hands down a city of champions. We have an expectation of winning. So one of the amazing pros to it is just one, how fervent of a fan base we actually are here. And two, it's just an experience. If you've never been to the TD Garden when the Celtics are on a hot streak and you see all of those people in their green jerseys going wild. Or if you've never been to Fenway, one of the oldest baseball stadiums in the United States. So much history, so much tradition, so much better now that the curse is finally done. That's one of those things where like, as a sports fan, you have to check this out. And if you're living here, it's something to know about because honestly, you're going to have parades around it. You're going to have so many different celebrities here. You're going to have so many different athletes here. We are just like a Mecca for the true sports fan. And let me tell you, if you are a hockey fan, the Bruins are one of the original teams from the league. So it's a huge, huge, huge pro. Not only that, but we've expanded a lot in the different offerings that we have for our pro sports teams. You have the New England Revolution. You obviously have the Bruins for hockey. You have the Boston Red Sox for baseball. You also have the Boston Celtics. And let's not forget the New England Patriots. Bill Belichick, all of those great players, great organization, they're all here. It is a major pro and it's something that you really need to think about when you're moving here because if you are a diehard sports fan, it is going to be heaven. Unless you're a Jets fan, then just like anything else, it's going to be terrible. All right, so the first con, let's talk about it. It's that winter weather. Boston can get very cold and quite snowy and let's be real, it's from November until March and you can expect super low temperatures, a high amount of snowfall and the occasional nor'easter, blizzard, things like that. It is terrible. If you live in, you know, Southie, you're gonna have problems too because parking is a huge issue. You may not realize it, but digging out your parking spot from the snow is a big deal. There's not a lot of places to put the snow and the system which we have of reserving parking spots that you've shoveled out, let's be honest, it's a little bit savage. People basically leave weird items, cones, chairs, just what would appear to be trash as their spot saver. And it will be all hell breaking loose if you, you know, take someone's spot or move their stuff. So winter weather is definitely one of the biggest cons of moving here to Boston.
All right, let's talk about pro number two. And that's the fact that we have a just absolutely gorgeous four season, beautiful set of weather. And it's where, you know, the city really comes to life after the snow melts and, you know, you're having highs in the eighties and it's just like amazing. You're having people out on the Charles paddle boarding, you have sailing, boating, you have people walking around the city because it's such a walkable city. You have everything that you need and would want to see in that quintessential New England four season set of weather. So what's great about it is yes, you're gonna get all that autumn foliage that, you know, is just amazing that, you know, people come to take pictures of and there's even things like, it's called leaf peeping. I mean, it's kind of weird, but basically people are just coming out to look at the autumn leaves as they're changing over. You also have these very temperate and moderate weather temperatures. So you're not having like an Arizona or a California where it's 110 degrees and it is just disgusting. You're having these, you know, summers where the average temperature is in the 80s. You have the spring where, you know, it's really nice, it's lush, it's green, everything's blooming. You have the autumn where, you know, it's crisp and, you know, you can feel it in the air. And then, well, let's be honest, who doesn't love just a white snow blanketed city? It's kind of beautiful. It's kind of amazing. There's so many different things. It's definitely a pro how awesome our weather is. All right, so let's get to con number two. And that's the fact that the cost of living here is so high. The city's cost of living is, let's be honest, 48% higher than the national average with housing costs well, I mean, it's 107% higher than the US average. It is expensive to buy here. And that's why we love helping people buy and sell homes here because a lot of people don't realize just how difficult it actually is, especially when they're relocating from another state or even another country. The other part of this that is just like, a total con and a bummer is the fact that prices also get high when you get out of Boston and it's for both purchasing as well as rentals. It's not just one, but if you're looking to rent or buy in places like Brookline or Somerville or Cambridge or the South End or the Back Bay, you're going to be seeing some of the highest rents in the entire country in those places. So that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind of. It's totally a con about living here in Boston. All right, here's another big pro. And that's the fact that let's be honest, this is a hub for universities. We have some of the best colleges in the world here. Now, what most people don't realize is we actually have over 35 universities and colleges here. Everybody knows about MIT. Everybody knows about Harvard. Everybody knows about Boston College and everybody knows about Northeastern, but you also have places like Emerson College and you have so many different avenues to get a great education here. It is one of the biggest pros of living in the area. Plus you have just intelligent people. The level of just thought and critical thinking and wicked smart people that are here, obviously kidding. I know that's terrible, but come on that's funny, is through the roof. So definite pro, just the fact that there are so many smart people that are in and about. One of my favorite people that I've gotten to meet a couple times is Dr. Cornell West. So if you've never heard of him, yes, he was in a Matrix movie. Yes, that's probably dating me because I know that's like super old. And he is one of our intellectual thought leaders of modern times. And he lives right here in Boston in the Cambridge suburb. And that's the thing is you have so many great educational institutions that you're going to bump into people that you would never think in a million years would just be there. And oh, some of the other great things. Well, a lot of the places like Harvard, for example, give some of their coursework for free online. So it's one of those things where you're just getting such a great community here of amazing, amazing universities. Okay, so another con, everything closes early. 
we really don't believe in the 24 hour anything here. So if you're looking to go out to bars, if you're looking to go out to restaurants, if you want to have like that late night diner food or a pizza, you know, just getting a slice, something like that, be warned, the later it gets, the less your chances are. Many, many, many places close before 10 p.m. and bars are only open and are actually required to close before 2 a.m. So like if you're looking for an all night rager, don't wait until midnight to go out. It is one of those things where you have to go out early and you have to then, you know, keep in mind that public transportation, one of those things that we really love and so great. Well, in a lot of instances, it closes by 1 a.m. even before the bars close. So you're often going to need either an Uber or you know, if you are living in the Stone Age, a taxi, like, I mean, who even takes those anymore? Um, but that's the thing is, you know, other than grandma coming in on her dinosaur, those are the different ways that you're going to have to like get around after everything closes. And, you know, if it's during a sports game, forget about it. Not only is it going to be crazy and packed, but everything's going to have closed and you are going to be looking for what is there to do? Not much. Let's be honest. All right, guys. So we're halfway through our pros and cons video and I'm sure you're absolutely loving it. So remember, if you are enjoying it, hit that thumbs up button, give us a quick like and tell us, you know, did we get it wrong? Was there something that I've forgotten so far? Is it something that you have like a strong opinion about? Because I want to hear about it in the comments and I want to know what you think of our list of pros and cons so far. And remember, watch till the end of the video because at the end, we're going to give you something special. All right, so let's talk about the last pro. And it's the fact that there is so much great walkability and public transit here in Boston. You know, the T, you know, I'll, okay, let's be honest. It's not always the best, but it is reliable. It is convenient and there are a number of people, a large percentage that if you're living inside the city proper, that don't even have cars just because it is so good and because the city is so walkable. It is not where it's this city where it would take days and days and days to walk across. Believe it or not, if you have an afternoon, you can walk from one side of the city to the other. Now, not to like talk trash on the traffic, but sometimes you could walk from one side of the city to the other before you could drive it because the traffic is so bad. So things to think about too, is that at 48 and a half square miles, Boston is not considered a big city. You can walk around it. You have the Emerald Belt, which is all of this like little belt of parks that are, you know, connected together. So it makes it really easy to walk around and in the city. And then, you know, there's just so many different things. You can hop on the T, that's what we call the train or the subway, but you also have commuter rails, or if you're looking to get outside of the city, Logan Airport is super easy to get to from within the city, you can hop right on the train. From there, you can take the express to, you know, Provincetown down on the Cape. You can also fly to New York City in about 45 minutes or many other destinations. If you're going on vacation to Europe, it only takes about five to five and a half hours. So that's where, again, you know, this being such a great walkable city, as well as just a city that is convenient for transportation is amazing. Okay, so our next con, and let's be honest, a lot of people are going to be renting when they move here, and we love helping people with that but the process is unlike anywhere else in the country. It's complicated, it doesn't make sense, and it can be a nightmare. So that is kind of one of the big things that I want to address is this is going to be something where if you're renting, you're often going to have your first month, your last month, and a broker fee. And the broker fee is generally speaking, usually equal to one month's rent. And here's the thing, calling directly to one of the rental listing agents doesn't mean that you're going to pay less of a fee. It just means that that agent is going to get all of it. So that's one of the huge cons about our area because a lot of times 
people moving from other parts of the country aren't used to the fact that they're going to have to pay a broker fee on top of their first and last and sometimes security. So with our rent prices being so high, you're sometimes having to come out of pocket four full months at a more than you're used to rental rate. And that's hard. All right. So for our fourth pro, let's talk about just the diverse food scene here. Let's talk about how good it is if you are a foodie or a person that just enjoys eating. Me, I'm a big fan that you can go and you can get all sorts of food. I mean, if you consider yourself a foodie, you're going to find plenty to explore in the city. If you like Asian cuisines, Chinatown has some of the best, but don't stop there in some of the different outlying neighborhoods like Alston and Brighton and Charlestown, there are some of the best ramen shops that you will ever have. And that's not even talking about, oh my God, the fresh catches and the fresh seafood that we're getting because literally kind of like in a movie or in a TV show like you've heard of, it's fresh off the boat. You are sometimes having a meal where that fish was caught that morning and you are you know, getting to enjoy it that evening. So something like fresh seafood here is something to die for. And let's not forget, Maine lobsters are not that far away. So again, it's something where that morning's catch will have been shipped down to Boston and you're having it that evening for dinner. So it's something that you really want to check out. Now, obviously we have our staples that everybody knows about it, like the North End with all the different great Italian things, you know, don't get me started on cannolis. But again, huge pro. It is amazing, amazing, amazing. And, you know, don't forget, go to Quincy Market. Oh, well, most non-local people will call it Faneuil Hall now. They're going to give you a ton of different options because it's, it's basically just a mall of little food places from all around the city that are giving tourists their offerings. So what you're going to see is just a little bit of everything. So that's like one of the great spots if you're only going to be in town for like 24 hours. But if you're moving here to stay and you're loving it, that's one of those things where you got to know that's where you can try things without having to like bounce all around the city. All right, so here's the last con. And believe me, guys, this is actually a big one. It's the fact that we get hit hard by daylight savings time. And we also just have a limited amount of daylight most of the year. Our winters are dark. It'll be oftentimes where you are waking up, heading out to work, doing your morning commute, getting the kids to school, doing all these different things in darkness. It will sometimes not be light out until after 8 a.m. And then here's the kicker. It will get dark and the sun will actually set by 4 p.m. So when we say that like you can wake up, go to work and then get back home and never have seen like daylight, it's not a joke. It can be brutal in those winter months. So it's one of those things that remember, you know, if you're a person that like needs sunshine, it is going to be absolutely, absolutely imperative that you know that you're not going to have a lot of daylight. So building your schedule out around where you can sneak out. And even then it's probably gonna be cloudy. Let's be real or snowy. All right, guys. So that's all the pros and cons of living in Boston right here, right now. And, you know, those are all things that, you know, you need to know about if you're considering making a move or relocating here, or even if you're just moving within the city, or if you want to move from the suburbs into the city. Now, those are all things that we love helping you with privately, but the only way we can help you is if you reach out. You have to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us a message or an email, days, nights, weekends, whenever you want to do it, we've got your back when moving to Boston or let's be honest, the suburbs. But until the next video, guys, we'll catch you later. Have a great, great time and watch that next video.